8. A city's shady past, Lake Mead is Nevada's largest reservoir and one of the biggest reservoirs in the United States. As a decades-long drought continues to plague the region, water levels are hitting record lows. In 2022, the receding waters revealed a shocking array of discoveries, including at least four sets of human remains. One body was found in a barrel that was dumped into the reservoir more than 30 years ago. Based on the decomposed body's clothing and footwear, authorities believe that the person was an adult male who died sometime between the mid-1970s and the early 80s. He was shot to death in an apparent homicide, but his identity and the circumstances surrounding his murder are unknown. The discovery reignited old rumors about mafia hitmen dumping bodies into Lake Mead in barrels. Normally, it would be easy to write off a claim like this as people's imaginations get carried away. But given the evidence and the lake's proximity to Las Vegas, it seems more than plausible. Another set of remains was found just days later on a sandbar, but in this case, there was no evidence of foul play. According to the most recent updates, authorities are still working to identify the bodies. Numerous other interesting but less haunting relics from the past have appeared amid Lake Mead's dramatic transformation, including a variety of vehicles. A World War II-era plywood boat, known as a Higgins boat, came into view in an area of the basin that once sat 185 feet underwater. After the war, it was sold to a private owner, who used it to conduct surveys and then deliberately scuttled it. Photos of a heavily rusted 1938 Chrysler Imperial convertible have also made the rounds on social media, although very few details about the discovery have been shared. And Lake Mead is also home to a B-29 Super Fortress bomber wreck that crashed in 1948. 7. Laoshingdon Island Located in East China's Yangtze Province, Poyang Lake is the country's largest freshwater lake. It covers an area roughly twice the size of London during its annual peak period. It's home to a historic site called Laoshingdun Island, where a collection of ancient structures were built during the Five Dynasties period between 907 and 960 AD. Laoshingdun Island is typically partially submerged, but is known to reappear in its entirety sometimes during regular dry seasons. In recent years, a lack of rainfall, oppressive heat, and dams along the rivers that feed the lake have caused its water levels to drop increasingly low, and the dry season seemed to be starting earlier and earlier each year. As a result, in 2022, Lao Xingdun Island became fully visible on the earliest date since record-keeping began in 1971. At the time, the lake had shrunk by 75% from its normal size, exposing the island's pagoda-style buildings and 600-year-old Buddha statues. Elsewhere in Poyang Lake, the receding waters have revealed a granite bridge that was built around 1630 during the reign of the Ming Dynasty's last emperor. It became visible in 2014 for the first time in many years and has repeatedly reappeared in the years since. The bridge has spent enough time out of the water that experts started repairing it in 2016. In 2014, Chinese officials reported that Lake Poyang's water levels had fallen as low as 32 feet during the dry season for the last several years. In 2022, the lake didn't experience its typical annual swelling. The dry season began three months early, and the water dropped to a new low of 29.4 feet, which means Lao Xingdun Island and other ancient landmarks may soon be spending more time out of the water than in it. 6. Rockport Ghost Town in the early 1950s, the federal U.S. government bought property in Utah for the creation of the One Ship Dam and Rockport Reservoir. Nearly 30 families living in the small town of Rockport were evicted through eminent domain. Founded by European-American settlers in 1860, Rockport, originally called Crandall, soon found itself caught in the crosshairs of the Black Hawk War between the region's Mormon settlers and members of various Native American tribes, including the Ute, Apache, and Navajo. Residents fled Rockport to get away from the violence and returned six years later in 1867. They built a wall around the town and renamed it Rockport. After learning about the planned construction of the dam, the town's remaining 200 residents relocated and preserved some of their buildings, including the local schoolhouse. 
They left almost everything else behind, including their homes. Soon enough, the abandoned town was sitting at the bottom of a man-made lake. For more than two decades, the southwestern U.S. has been experiencing a mega drought. In recent years, the region's conditions have reached their driest in 1,200 years. Consequently, the Rockport Reservoir has dipped to record low water levels. In 2021, it was reduced to a quarter of its total capacity, revealing the old foundations and streets of Rockport for the first time in 64 years. Little is left of the crumbling ruins, and they weren't visible for long. Within a year of the town's exposure, the Rockport Dam was filled to 90% capacity, thanks to the ample snowpack runoff it saw in 2022. What ghost towns have you visited? Tell us in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. An Ancient City During the 15th century BC, a powerful but short-lived dynasty called the Mitanni ruled over a region of northern Mesopotamia area, encompassing parts of modern-day Iraq, Turkey, and Syria. When they fell to the Assyrians sometime during the 14th or 13th century BC, their conquerors decimated almost every sign of their culture. As a result, very little archaeological evidence from the Bronze Age Empire has survived into modern times. Archaeologists know next to nothing about the ancient society. Their origins, ethnicity, lifestyle, customs, and spiritual beliefs are largely a mystery, and their capital city, Taidu, has never been found. A Mitanni city that was discovered in recent decades, called Kemune, is typically submerged in northern Iraq's Mosul Dam, limiting the ability of experts to fully explore it. It's been that way since the dam was flooded in the 1980s. The ruins appeared in 2019 during a major drought, and archaeologists scrambled to the site to learn what they could before the waters rose again. They discovered a palace with 22-foot-high walls, bearing evidence of the vivid paintings that once covered them. Located to the south of the main city, the royal residence overlooked the Tigris River. It's one of four known Mitanni palaces ever found, and is the only one located within the heart of the empire's territory. The team also found ten clay tablets inscribed with an early type of writing called cuneiform. A translation of one tablet suggests that the city's real name was Zakhiku rather than Kamune. The city was soon underwater again, but it reappeared in 2022 and will most likely be above water again in the near future, as drought conditions continue to worsen. 4. A 19th century village Built to supply fresh water to Liverpool in northern England, Lake Vernwy was Europe's largest man-made reservoir when it was created in Powys, Wales during the 1880s. Before it was filled with water, the area was home to a village called Landwin. During its heyday, it was a small but thriving farming community, with 37 houses, 10 farmhouses, a church, two chapels, three pubs, and some shops. When Lan Within's residents learned that they were going to be flooded out, they moved their church. Everything else was at least partially demolished, and they resettled a few miles away in a newly built village of the same name, which still exists today. The village ruins reappeared for the first time in 1976, when a drought plunged the reservoir's water levels much lower than normal. It happened again in 1995 and 2022, revealing an old road, gateposts, portions of the village wall, a bridge, and the crumbling foundations of houses. Today, the only existing representations of what Lanwidin looked like before it was demolished are drawings, artwork, and very old photographs. And while not much is left of the village, seeing the ruins helps bring it to life in a way that a picture can't. 3. Mormon Island Located in California's Folsom Lake, Mormon Island was among the many settlements that sprang up during the Gold Rush era in the 1840s. It technically wasn't an island like its name implies, but it was on a sandbar surrounded by the American River on three sides and bordered by a man-made canal to the south. At its peak in 1853, Mormon Island was home to around 2,500 residents, making it one of the largest gold rush towns. It had four hotels, five general stores, three dry goods stores, a school, a post office, seven saloons, and various other businesses which catered to the bustling boom town. 
The gold rush ended in 1855, and in 1856, a fire destroyed much of the settlement. A lot of residents moved elsewhere, but people continued to live in Mormon Island until the 1940s, when it was raised ahead of the construction of the Folsom Dam. The reservoir was flooded in 1955, and the village has only reappeared a handful of times since then. In late 2013 and early 2014, the reservoir's water levels plummeted due to drought, partially exposing the town's outer reaches but leaving most of it submerged. The foundations of what researchers believe were a dairy and a winery became visible, along with scattered debris including old nails, broken pottery, loose bricks, and rusty mattress springs. Mormon Island became visible again in 2015 and 2021, and it won't be too surprising if it continues to happen given the ongoing drought conditions in the American Southwest. 2. USS Inaugural Built during World War II to protect larger naval ships, the 185-foot-long minesweeper USS Inaugural entered service in 1945. It operated primarily in the Pacific area, where it participated in the invasion of Okinawa and various other battles. The ship was decommissioned shortly after the war in 1946 and spent more than two decades mothballed in Texas. In 1968, the inaugural was relocated to St. Louis, Missouri, where it was slated to become a floating museum. It was designated as a National Historic Landmark in 1986. The Mississippi River flooded in 1993, causing the inaugural to break free from its moorings at the iconic Gateway Arch, causing a breach in its hull. It floated about a half mile downstream as it took on water and eventually came to rest on its side along the riverbank. The ship was ultimately deemed a total loss, and any plans to try salvaging it were cancelled. The wreck typically sits partially submerged in shallow water, but it is occasionally exposed by lower-than-usual water levels. In 2012, the inaugural became visible in its entirety, and salvagers took advantage of the opportunity to begin scrapping the vessel. As workers hauled away 40 tons of metal, they realized that the ship's guns were missing. Nobody ever figured out where they went, and the river's levels began to rise again, forcing the team to abandon the inaugural in a partially dismantled state. What's left of it still occasionally appears when the water level drops. 1. 19th Century River Ferry during his routine search along the Mississippi for interesting artifacts one day in 2022, Baton Rouge resident Patrick Ford discovered a 19th century ship. Barely able to contain his excitement, he told all his friends, then contacted the local media and experts. Louisiana state archaeologist Chip McGimsey confirmed Ford's suspicions that the wreck is a 19th century ferry called the Brook Hill. Built in Indiana in 1896, it transported passengers between Baton Rouge and Port Allen until it sank during a storm in 1915. Before its recent appearance, the Brook Hill had surfaced once before since its sinking in 1992. But it was extremely muddy and it was difficult to tell what it was. It was a lot more exposed this time, which was exciting on one hand but not necessarily a good thing. Not only did the wreck surface due to historically low water levels resulting from chronic drought, people stole pieces of it while the opportunity was there. Louisiana's archaeology department reportedly debated over whether or not to open the wreck to the public. They decided they wanted people to be able to experience history up close, so they opened it, and they even decided not to surround it with a protective fence. Unfortunately, some visitors disrespected the site. McGimsey caught a man stealing pieces of the wreck twice and tried persuading him to put one of the pieces back. The man eventually relented and returned the piece, but he wasn't happy about doing so. After the confrontation, Louisiana's attorney general contacted the man personally and convinced him to bring back any other pieces he had taken. Thanks for watching. What else do you think receding water levels could reveal? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.